Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the final episode of the Netflix original docu-series Tiger King, episode 7 entitled Dethroned. What a eye-opening, jaw-dropping ending, of course. I'll have the recap with photos offset to the side. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. We see old footage of Joe and his staff enjoying a night at the carnival, having fun, playing games. And we hear the voiceover of Joe with a call from jail saying, you know why an animal dies in, uh, in a cage? It's because their souls die. So now we're in this location of Thackerville, Oklahoma. And Jeff explains that this is the new location of the zoo. We don't want to have to be rushing and bringing on the, the old stuff with Joe. And we have information that we don't have to be 100% done with everything in this location, but we at least need to have a good percentage of it set up. And then we see Tim Stark. He is helping and assisting him with something. And we see that Tim Stark says, you know, I have millions of dollars of equipment and hundreds of animals. And I thought that this zoo would be a good investment. And now we're in a partnership. The interviewer asked Tim, are you worried um, about Joe's case falling? And he says, no, I'm not worried. And Joe should be the only one that's worried right now. We see Dylan receiving calls from Joe and they're having their intimate conversations. And Joe is saying, you know, I just want to make sure you don't leave me while I'm in jail. And Dylan says, hey, I'm not going anywhere. I'm your husband and everything's going to be OK. You just stay strong in there. And he says, you know, we talk every day and this is our conversations about three times a day. The status of the GW Zoo is becoming very docile, and Jeff allowed the feds to raid Joe's house, and they found documents, hard drives, whatever they needed, they just raided the whole place, and you can see that the home is just completely mauled through and looks a hot mess. So at the zoo, um, they further investigate, and they find several tigers that had been shot and buried and it made the news doc says that you know i think they put the pressure on joe by getting all of these wildlife charges because the murder for hire case was so flimsy and mixing all of the wildlife charges and the murder for hire makes him look like a, this murderous monster. The federal prosecutor explains that the charges are from buying and selling animals of endangered species and killing them. And Joe says, you know, that adds up. All of those charges add up to about 79 years in jail. And when they ask Joe, did you shoot those tigers? And Joe says, look, I euthanized those tigers because they were sick. And you can only do that via needle or tranquilizer gunshot. So I had to do what I had to do to give them their euthanizations. And those tigers were sick. And Jeff says, you know, we're doing any and everything that we can to spread the word of this new location. And we're changing the location of the zoo because I don't want this energy of Joe to be around all the time. And when people ask me what I do and I tell them the location, they think I'm Joe. And they say, hey, are you that guy that's from? He's like, no, that's that's not me. And he wants to move. And we see news footage of him bringing animals and little baby cubs. And he's saying, you know, we're going to move to a new location and this is what we have to look forward to and Jeff explains that James was upset because he wasn't going to be a part of this new zoo but um James he said didn't have any money for the investment and you I can't just add your name just because you want to be associated with it you need money to invest in this and James tells Jeff that you know if I if it wasn't for me you would have been indicted with Joe and Jeff, you know, lets him know that, okay, well, business doesn't work like that. And James says, you know, Jeff was involved in correlating something with Alan and killing Carol. Um, but they said 
we're going to say what we need to say so we're not charged, giving the feds certain types of info. And John says, you know, my job with Joe is to keep him out of trouble. And I can't get him out of this one. And I can't believe that I'm involved in a federal murder for hire court case. And he says, it's just too much. I've lost weight. I had to buy pants and new pants to go to court because, you know, I usually don't even dress up. And a reporter says that this trial has everyone involved. Anyone that Joe knew, they made sure that they brought those people to, to trial to testify in any way, shape or form. And Joshua says, you know, I'm a libertarian. And so I say F the feds. And I'm not even in agreement with everything that they do. But he said, I, I was contacted by the feds and they asked me, are you going to be team government or team Joe? And he says that was one of the scariest moments of my life. Then we see Eric and he says, you know, I'm a good person. I've, I've, I've never even had a traffic ticket. I don't get in trouble like this. And going to court is just not something that I want to do. And the reporter says that, we can hear about people being murdered all the time, but people will not tolerate animal abuse. And when this happened, all of these charges were dropped on Joe at the same time. And I think that it was this message to bring to the forefront to just give him and throw the book at him. And Eric says that to the news team that Joe said that if it was this easy for me to kill one tiger, it might be easy for me to just shoot all of them. And he says that there was no way I could have stopped whatever it was that he wanted to do. And later on, obviously intoxicated, Eric says, you know, those animals trusted me to protect them and I didn't protect them. And that's something that I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. So Carol gets ready for her big day to testify in court and she's putting on lipstick and she's getting pretty for that day. And she says that I've endured threats. My husband and me have endured threats from Joe for years. And the fact that he didn't want to do it himself is what surprises me. And she says, I think that if he did kill me and I had in my mind that if he did kill me, all that would do is just heighten the movement and that my death would all be worth it. So John, his ex says, I'm testifying against Joe concerning not only the murder for hire, but the animal abuse. He said, I saw it and heard it all. And he says that there was times where Joe said he wanted him to drive to Allen to Dallas to get a fake ID um, so he could go to Florida and marry and murder Carol. And there was nobody on Joe's behalf that was there in that court. Nobody was sitting on that side that had anything positive to say uh, about Joe. And Mark goes on and he says that Jeff found out Joe was embezzling money and killing animals. And I said, you know, do what you need to do to take him down. And Mark is like, I'm working 16 to 18 hour days because I know Jeff and I have a good business plan. And I think this is a good idea. But what was interesting, the reporter says that Jeff is a skilled con artist. He's a witness, but he didn't take the witness stand. Why? It's because he knows that he would have perjured himself. It's odd that he's not facing any charges. And James says, you know, they released the guy that was supposed to murder this lady. And he didn't get probation or anything. And there are phone recordings that prove that Allen never went to Florida. Um, so he perjured himself on the witness stand. We see that in the documentary. And he goes on on the phone and we hear him saying certain, certain statements like, I never even went to Florida. I was never going to kill anybody. Someone could have given me a million dollars and I still wouldn't have done anything to that woman. I've never even been to Florida on vacation. Um, so it just lets you know that he perjured himself. He said one thing in court and another thing on video. And Joe's attorneys didn't want him to testify, but Joe insisted that he testified. And that really threw the lawyers off and everybody in the court off. And Joe says, you know, 
Jeff claims, and there are text messages proving that Jeff wanted Alan to go home. Jeff said to give him $3,000 so he can get out of there. And on Thanksgiving Day, I served a hundred, over 150 people uh, food, Thanksgiving meals. And we raised about $3,000 so we could send Alan back home. And it was out of the register under Jeff's orders. There are text messages saying this. And Doc is saying that, Going across the country to kill somebody from for three thousand dollars doesn't seem like it's even enough. Like a hundred thousand dollars seems more feasible, and it just doesn't make any sense. And Joshua says, you know, things that that Jeff says and does is just it does it never adds up. And Jeff says, I was investigating. I, I don't I wasn't setting anybody up. But Joshua says that he thinks that. Jeff was the main one that had this idea to set uh, Joe up for everything. And Joe says, if I could get my life together, like if I was released, I, I, I would love to start all over again because I have no choice. And I'm tired of all of the drama. And unfortunately, they had to show all of this past footage of Joe making all of these threats um, about Carol. Then we see Eric working in this restaurant, uh, entitled Redneck Haven. And remind me not to eat here because he's preparing a burger, um, with his hands, no gloves or anything. And he's seasoning it and he's pressing the meat onto the grill with his bare hands. I thought that was pretty interesting. And we hear on the news that, uh, it took about three to four hours of deliberation and the jury found Joe guilty on all 19 counts. And Eric seems pretty happy about that. And Joe says to a news crew that, yeah, he bought and sold Cubs, but, you know, that whole murder for hire for Carol, you know, I, I just I just don't think he did. It's just unlikely and it doesn't make any any sense. And Howard and Carol, they celebrate with champagne and cocktail shrimp. And he sings to his wife and just all kinds of stuff. Jeff goes on to explain that they're moving 300 of these animals to their new home and that his wife is now pregnant and she'll be induced to have their daughter. And, you know, he's saying we'll get Lauren back in the gym. And I'm thinking, OK, if she going to the gym, she has a reason because she just had a baby. If she's going, you clearly need to go with her to the gym before you talk about who needs to go. Anywho, and he explains that they're getting a nanny to help them raise the baby. And Jeff says, you know, we're getting a, a nanny. And, of course, I'm picking the nanny. And he shows this very seductive photo of this nanny and that Jeff has selected. And Lauren is completely a duh, duh, and lost to Jeff's intentions. And she even says, oh, yeah, you know, I, I even noticed that some of these women are bilingual and, you know, if they're, if they're the nanny, then they can teach them another language. And I'm sitting there like, girl, what? But anyway, so the reporter says that Jeff can still go to jail later down the line. So he needs to chillax if he thinks that he's untouchable. And John, you know, the ex-manager, he says, I called the feds and I asked them and said, how is it that a lot of people like James and Jeff are just there? They were involved in so much and they have all of this evidence and they're just walking around free with no punishment. And he said that the feds told me that this is far from over. So Joe is saying that, hey, I got a list of 37 names of people I could shut down right now. And he said, if you asked me about PETA and working from working with PETA, that would have been the last thing on my mind. But I needed to reach out to, P to PETA because technically he sees it as if, hey, I'm going down. If I'm going down, other people are going down with me. So we see uh, Brittany Pete and she works for the animal law enforcement um, of PETA and she said we sat down with Joe and his lawyers in jail and we saw documentation of other people concerning the abuse of animals and trafficking and the interviewer is looking at paperwork that Dylan, Dylan is sorting out of this, this storage area and he says oh look um, here's one where it's a sale with Doc and Dylan is like whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait wait give me that no 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 we can't show that and Brittany says you know Joe 
has information that Doc has a gas chamber for cubs when they've reached the age um, to where people can't pet them anymore. And he puts them in a gas chamber. And after he puts them in the gas chamber, he cremates them on his site. And he has an on-site crematorium. And then we see Tim and Jeff, and they have a falling out. And Tim eventually figures out that Jeff doesn't have all this financial backing that he thought he did. And Tim is always the one fitting the bill when it comes to building and investing and cages and animals. So he sees um, eventually Jeff's deceptive ways, that he's this con artist. And he convinced him to invest all this time into building what he wanted and this idea for this zoo. We see John and he's talking about how he's moving on with his life and he left his wife for over 30 years. We then see John, Joe's ex, and he's getting the old tattoos covered up. And something that I thought was absolutely intriguing, and I absolutely love this guy. Joshua says, you know, everyone in this lost what the main focus was think about it it all started between this battle between two people um, with the idea to stop cub breeding and for the safety of the animals and what people were doing and it turned into something personal you had court cases lawyers all this stuff and it became about them millions of dollars in court fees lawyers donations from volunteers time energy money and all of that could have been used to save these animals in their natural habitats um We've completely lost sight of that. And the real issue is saving these animals on this planet. And then we see a younger Joe, some footage on a newscast. And he's saying, these are very dangerous animals. They're beautiful, but they're dangerous. But they need to be in Africa, India, and Asia, not in Oklahoma. There needs to be laws passed to protect them, and people need to stop breeding. And it's completely different personality that we see. Someone softer, someone more endearing, someone a little bit more clean cut and together. And it throws you back like, wow, how much that he's changed over the years. And Rick, remember the producer, he said, you know, I really believe that when Joe started off, he really cared about the animals and the purpose. But once he started getting that high flow of money, things started to change. And he says, unfortunately, I shot a reality show of a long period of time giving the idea that he really did care. And he said, I'll pay for that. And I'm still paying for that now. And the last scene which was absolutely eye-opening. We see Joe saying, after I moved my chimps last week, uh, it was really difficult. And these chimps, two chimps, sat in these two cages next to each other for over 10 years. Um, When we moved them to the Great Ape Center, which is located in Florida, and in two days... When they were out in this big yard, all they could do was hug each other. And Joe says, did I deprive them of that for 10 years? And he said, yeah, I did. I deprived them of being chimpanzees. And Joe says, did I do that intentionally? He said, no. I was just blinded by wanting a zoo so bad. And we see the remaining text of the episode, which says that Joe was sentenced to 22 years in prison, that the Big Cat Safety Act was not passed, um, that Doc uh, and his safari was raided by authorities in December 2019, and Doc has um, not responded to any of the allegations concerning the Cubs and the euthanations. And... What's also important, we see that five to 10,000 tigers live in captivity in the U.S., but fewer than 4,000 remain in the wild. And that is the end 
of the episode. First, let me say the editing, the producing, and the researchers of this documentary did an amazing job. With all the hoopla, with all of the individuals that we've learned about and that we saw, Joshua made a really good point that the point of everything, and I think the focus of this documentary to say, it people made it all about themselves and not about the animals. Um, which was really sad because as you're watching it, you forget about the animals and you really start focus on all, focusing on all the individuals and the crazy lifestyles and what was going on. So here's what I think concerning a lot of the people that were in the docuseries. Carol, I do believe that her day is coming. And just like how karma works, it may not work in the way that a lot of people think. Um, and what I mean by that is, she may not go to jail for murder um, uh, because there's no evidence. But what we do have evidence of is the video of her demonstrate, demonstrating how to take care, domesticate, breed, and sell these exotic animals. That's evidence right there, isn't it? And if anything, she should have some charges up on her. And the only thing about that is what is the statutes of limitation? Um, do we have any e evidence of how long ago that was and any evidence of if she's bred any more big cats or any other animals? Because that might be what sends her to jail. She should go to jail for something because she is doing the same thing that is against these laws that she says that she's protecting. Um, John, uh, Joe's ex-wife. When he testified, this is my opinion, against Joe, I think it was the ultimate payback for Travis, um, for taking Travis and his youth, uh, being that enabler of keeping them in this meth drug haze and feeling trapped for so many years. I honestly do. I think that he thought this is my opportunity to just say, I know all of this information and he needs to be in jail for that. I really do. Doc, uh, your day is coming too. And exactly just how karma works, you may not go to jail for anything in violating animal abuse or anything like that, but clearly, you, there's evidence of you messing around and having sex with underage girls and keeping them to adulthood and not providing any source as an employee because you've categorized them as employees of any financial gain from that. They didn't they're getting such a low minimal amount. Could that be viewed in court as some type of work abuse or labor law something um i do think that everybody will see their day and maybe not in the way well what a lot of people think mark jeff james their day is coming too and we have a lot of evidence just in this docuseries that you've broken a lot of animal rights laws um alan um it seems like that he could at least be char charged for perjury because he did say something on the stand that he did that was different from what he told in the documentary. He said in court that he drove there and he did all this with the intention of this and this and this. But then he says, I've never been to Florida. I've never even gone there. Um, Lauren. Oh, my goodness. Lauren, please get a divorce. And get this man out of your life. He's a con artist. Um, start thinking about that baby, that child. Move with somebody who loves you, some family. And get your life together with you and this baby before they take Jeff down, honey. Because they are clearly going to eventually take him down. And you don't want to go down with them. And it gets to the point to where you can't even see your baby. She seems like she's super naive and unaware of his true intentions. And I'm like, girl, uh, clearly somebody uh, who was broken and was just, just probably pulled in by the lies of that mansion and all of these foreign cars that he had but really didn't have. Um, 
And you know, because you were his mistress while he was married. So don't come on now. You know the deal. Same thing to Dylan. Please get a divorce. Um, when we see this episode now, he seems like he's speaking clearly. He is a little bit aware of himself. Get the divorce and start over. A no, whatever it's called legally, end it. Um, that documentation that you have in that storage, either give it to somebody that you trust or digitally scan all of those documents and just send them to multiple places so people can have several copies so they can have that evidence so Joe can have his day in court and he can use that to help him while he's in jail and you run for the hills you are young do not spend your life waiting on Joe do not do it do not waste your youth leave um and Joshua I hope he's doing something productive because he is very smart and I hope that he gets help from that trauma that he saw because to see somebody take their life right in front of you and to be in the midst of what Joe pulled you into, that campaign stuff, all of that stuff, I hope that he's using that beautiful mind to do something really, really productive because he's really, really smart. And Joe, it's really, really unfortunate, but hey, if you if you did the crime, you got to do the time. It may not have been in court the way that you thought, but if you were buying and selling and breeding and you knew that that was against the law, then you have to serve your time for that. It's really, really, really unfortunate. Maybe he can get some years knocked off by exposing and giving evidence of other breeders of people breaking the law that may help him get out sooner. Um, because you can tell from previous footage that Joe was a completely different person. And I, I think that was all due to drugs and money. Once he started getting that profit, that he really changed. And that that drugs and cocaine and meth and all of that stuff introduced to his life really, really flipped him. That money and like I say, you know, everything that glitters isn't gold. He really got pulled into that, which is really, really sad. You bringing in and luring in those young men knowing that they were addicted and using those drugs to keep them in your life. That was wrong, Joe. It was wrong. And I do think that those animals release them back into the natural habitat. What is it going to take? Um, and locking them up and keeping them in there for financial gain, for people to take pictures and people to take photos is wrong. People need to understand that, look, your pleasure um, is not worth more than their captivity. They need to be free. And if you know places that are doing that and keeping, I mean, when Joe said that those chimpanzees were in those cages for over 10 years, I was like, what? That is insane, y'all. Let me know what you think. I learned a lot, you guys. Um, I do think that we just all need to take care of each other and just be aware that that almighty dollar can get us all in trouble and just try to do what's right to try to live the best way that we can. All right. Let me know what you thought about this series. Leave your comments in the comment section. Free, feel free to let loose with the comments. I know I've been saying <laughs> throughout all these recaps to so please no spoilers, but hey, this is the last one, episode seven. So feel free to just say whatever you want to say because this is the last episode and anybody you you know viewing this video clearly has seen and hopefully has seen episode seven and have listened to this recap um so let me know what you think subscribe i hope that you enjoyed my hard work and these recaps uh subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post more series more movies to review Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything, you guys. And follow me on Instagram at that same profile name, official bun underscore E. Get ready for how to get away with murder. It's the end of season six, the last few episodes. And stay tuned for HBO's Insecure and so much more. All right. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.